I've mentioned in a previous video, Mothman was a Russian spy, that intelligence agencies around the world, such as the CIA, would regularly run psychological experiments on their own citizens during the Cold War, often using psychedelic drugs. For example, in Europe, the French laced some small town's local bread supply with LSD, just to see what would happen. The CIA ran similar experiments, such as Operation Midnight Climax, which tested the effects of LSD on non-consenting individuals. But Midnight Climax was not a standalone operation. It was part of a greater program called MKUltra. MKUltra was a program designed to study the human mind and discover ways to alter people's thoughts, change their personalities, affect their mood and emotions, and even control their mind. I'm sure that this is something you've heard about before. MKUltra is something that's been mentioned and explored even in popular culture. Captain America the Winter Soldier is a perfect example, where the hero's best friend, Bucky Barnes, is brainwashed into becoming the perfect assassin. Bucky Barnes has his personality wiped and replaced so effectively that not only does he forget who he is, but he also forgets his friend, Steve Rogers, and performs a mission to take him out. Before we get started here, remember these videos are just for fun, don't take them too seriously. I'm just spinning together a little bit of wizardry and magic for your entertainment. I want you to think critically about everything that I say in this video, and I even encourage you to debunk every wild statement that I make. MKUltra studied a lot of different possibilities, but their main focus was to make the perfect pawn, the ideal soldier for the United States government. One of the things MKUltra discovered was that people under hypnotic states could not only focus better, but they could perform better and were more susceptible to suggestion. The CIA and the United States military wondered if they created an army of spies, assassins, and soldiers that operated under various hypnotic states, would it make their network of agents more effective? The original idea was to create perfect Manchurian candidates, assassins that could kill on command and then slip back into society without retaining any memory of what they had done. The head of MKUltra was Sidney Gotieb, a chemist and spymaster for the CIA. Born August 3rd, 1918 and passed away in March of 1999, Gotieb would have overseen hundreds of experiments, most of which considered forms of torture, and many inflicted on unwilling participants. The most frustrating part of Operation MKUltra came after it was declassified. After his tenure with the CIA ended, Gotieb told the world that the entire program turned out to be useless. This was a lie. In 1984, nine Canadians sued the United States government in hopes of getting some compensation for the lasting effects that MKUltra experiments had on their lives. Apparently, out of all of the test subjects around the world, those in Montreal, Quebec, got the worst treatment. There were some startling revelations about the activities of the CIA in Canada. The American Intelligence Agency had paid for a series of brainwashing experiments under a project codenamed MKUltra. The tests were conducted in secret in the United States and in Canada at a mental hospital attached to McGill University. The patients were never told that their treatment was part of a CIA experiment. Despite the fact that the CIA operated secretly in Canada to fund these medical experiments on Canadian citizens, the federal government in Ottawa has joined hands with the government in Washington to hold back vital information which might at last reveal all the sordid details. If Hypothetically, the CIA were to try to mess with me, I couldn't trust that the Canadian government would do anything to help me out. In fact, quite the opposite. I think the case could be broken if the Canadian government would say to the CIA, we're not going to cover up for you any longer. We're going to give this material to Mr. Orlico for his case. Oh, I just think uh, the Canadian government's a little bit... Uh, 
uh, like international wimps uh, in the case of uh, the United States. I don't know why they're so scared of us. We're not going to do anything. I don't think the Seventh Army is going to attack Montreal because you give us that material. They get very belligerent, the Canadians, with the Russians when they shoot down the uh, 007 with some Canadian citizens. But when the CIA covertly does something to all the citizens, ruins the lives of many of these citizens, well, the Canadian government is doing nothing. I don't know why. Here you're fighting the CIA. That scares the, the Canada. The Canadian government are a bunch of bitches. So it would be up to me to get back at the CIA for what they had done by exposing their lies. By the way, welcome back to History is a Lie. You might think of hypnosis as a gimmick, or maybe a party trick. Hypnotists take willing participants and put them into a hypnotic suggestive state and influence their behaviors. You might see someone bark like a dog, or forget who they are, or perhaps display some silly over-the-top behavior. But a professional hypnotist would tell you that they could never get somebody to do something that's counter to their personality. They insist that it's impossible to hypnotize somebody into doing something that goes against their moral code. But is that really true? Hypnosis is not always performed on willing participants, and you don't necessarily have to consent in order to be affected by hypnotic suggestion. Shopping malls, modern cathedrals to spending money. They're designed to disorientate us and make us stay longer than we need to. Every brick is there to manipulate us to buy. It's the perfect place to find a large number of compliant people to affect. What you hear in the background is a tamai announcement I pre-recorded and played through the shopping center. After half an hour of absorbing it, they should be ready for a final message. Welcome to the Whitgift Centre Croydon. So all customers wishing to reach up and grab this exciting opportunity should do it now. I was shopping around my friends and all of a sudden my hand just went up and I don't know what happened. It was quite embarrassing but... Darren Brown is a professional hypnotist and magician whom would pull stunts like this on his television show regularly. This particular demonstration may have been staged, but the point that he's making here is still true. All humans are susceptible to subtle hypnotic suggestion, and the average person is affected by them regularly in the media music, advertisements, films, television. The media is attacking your perception of reality at all times, usually in the name of making you a brain-dead consumer. The CIA and the American military wanted to conduct the MKUltra experiments after one startling discovery. Somehow, the Soviet-backed North Koreans had successfully brainwashed several American prisoners of war and when they came home, they were spouting communist propaganda. And there was reason to believe that the communists used drugs in this process. Like with all of the strange experiments that the CIA did during the Cold War, their motivation was knowing that their enemy had these things, but they didn't know what they did. So they had to run their own experiments to see how these drugs would affect the human mind. Could they use it to take over the government? Could they give these drugs to a politician or a military officer without them realizing and usurp the American government? The CIA believed that they needed to test LSD on their own citizens without their knowledge to see what would happen if a Soviet spy did the same thing to the president. But like I said, the CIA's focus eventually shifted into creating the perfect Manchurian candidate style assassin with heightened focus and a wipeable mind somebody that could easily slip in and out of society to perform covert operations without any memory of what they had done. Multiple techniques were tested to develop such a puppet. Depatterning is a use of electroshock treatment in which instead of giving the shocks, say, two or three times a week, they're given two or three times a day for three or four weeks, reducing the patient to a sort of animal, vegetable state, from which it's hoped that they would recover in a, a, a more healthy state of mind. It didn't work. There was another lady who had the uh, same kind of psychic driving that I did, and she was a very wiry, slender lady, and with lots of pep and zip, you know, and she'd go to the dances and this and that. And one day she just wasn't there. Well, sometime later, I was in the day hospital, and I happened to ask a nurse if she'd heard what had happened to this lady. And she said, oh, that's her sitting over there. And I looked, and there was a fat lady that just looked like she was made out of dough. She didn't know me. She didn't know herself. She didn't know anybody. She was gone. 
Now that's a death. An intelligence agency wouldn't necessarily want to perform mind-altering regiments on their own agents or staff. An organization such as the CIA also employs the use of outsiders, such as informants or people they call assets. People that aren't directly employed by the intelligence agency, but instead are members of the public, military, police, or even criminals or marginalized individuals that have been recruited for various purposes. If you're poor, alone, an addict, mentally unstable, or in some way a disenfranchised individual, well watch out for fake friends or romantic partners that suddenly show up in your life because they might be trying to honeypot you or entrap you into incriminating yourself in hopes of blackmailing you and forcing you to serve them against your will. So stay clean. Loyalty is difficult for the CIA to find. Anybody that's smart enough to be an agent is usually too principled to follow along with nefarious acts. But a duty-bound cop or military officer is much more willing to participate as long as they're not told the bigger picture of the operation. All you have to do is convince them that they're performing their duty for their country to get rid of some evil organization. The perfect CIA agent has been groomed their entire life to join the service. You ever wonder why there are so many secret societies? Freemasons, Shriners, Skull and Bones, things like that? Where do you think those guys end up? They're all in service of a master plan. Yes, some end up as politicians, police and military, maybe executives in a large corporation, DJs and musicians, or handlers in the entertainment industry. Those people are all ideal candidates for agencies like the CIA. Criminals are often used as intelligence assets because they're extremely easy to turn. Simply threatening to take them to prison for their crime crimes or manufacturing trumped up charges to ruin their lives is an effective way to manipulate a criminal into becoming an asset. And they make ideal informants because they're directly involved in the hidden world. But not everyone that's being used by the CIA understands that they're being used by the CIA. Sometimes they're manipulated by indirect covert means. Charles Manson might be an example of this one of the earliest MKUltra subjects. Charles Manson claimed that while in prison, he had doctors come in and perform regular tests and experiments on him without ever telling him why. He said that he didn't understand what the doctors were even doing to him and claimed that he did not trust them. This is something that author Tom O'Neill has talked about at length. It's possible that during all of that time, Charles Manson never understood that he was being used by the CIA. Now, nobody can prove that Charles Manson was brainwashed or altered through mind control techniques, but it is almost beyond a reasonable doubt that he was a CIA asset and he was being used and protected by the CIA. Number one. Spawn Ranch, where the Manson family lived, was under surveillance months before the tape murders. If the police knew they were plotting the murders, why didn't they stop them? Number two, there was a mysterious guy named Reeve Whitson who would constantly hang around Sharon Tate's house. A lot of Whitson's family and friends admitted that he was probably CIA. The morning after the tape murders, Whitson was at Tate's house before the police arrived, implying he was either keeping the house under surveillance or somehow had inside knowledge of the murders. Number three, this is where we get crazy. Manson committed a lot of petty crimes in the 60s, but whenever he got caught and thrown in jail, his parole officer, a guy named Roger Smith, negotiated his release. Beyond his legal prowess, Smith was an expert in LSD, amphetamines, and their effect on violence. Charles Manson was on parole that entire time, which means any misstep could have landed him back in prison for years, yet he kept getting released from jail over and over again. And considering how he became increasingly more insane and violent over time, it's pretty likely that he had his brain fried on LSD. Like I said, Operation Midnight Climax and other similar projects were designed explicitly to test LSD on unwilling participants, such as Johns at brothels, patients at mental hospitals, and prisoners. 
like Charles Manson. Now, there's no way of knowing how many people were affected, but it's likely that there were thousands of test subjects as the MK Ultra experiments were conducted over a 25 year period. A while ago, I was looking into the United States military's film department and the types of propaganda films that they were producing on nuclear weapons, jets, things like that. And I ended up stumbling across the military and the CIA's involvement in the entertainment industry. And what I discovered shocked me. The military is willing to help out any branch of the entertainment industry by providing them with jets, jeeps, ships, what have you. As long as the military gets final say on the script and the direction of the film. You can use the United States military to make your film as long as you're depicting the United States military in a positive light. This is an extension of their recruitment tools and it basically operates as an advertisement for the military. The film Captain Phillips is probably the most stark example of this. The first half of the film is very normal, then all of a sudden when the military shows up, it completely changes the tone of the film. One moment the film's about, hey, Tom Hanks is an ass, and the next moment it's America, yeah. In my last video, I asked how did Captain America Winter Soldier get made because it speaks out against the United States military. Well, one of the ways that they got around that is they did not involve the United States military in the production of the film so they were allowed to say whatever they wanted. Now, part of the reason the United States military wants final say on the script is so that they can use the film as a recruitment tool. But the other reason that they want final say is so that the film can be used as an extension of their propaganda so they can shape public perception. This is why Linda Moulton Howe won an Emmy Award for making that cattle mutilation documentary. The military engineered it that way to make her work look more legitimate and to create a perception about that film. Famously, in 1927, the United States military helped produce the film Wings. And Wings was the very first film to ever win an Academy Award. That's not a coincidence. The very concept of these award ceremonies is designed to shape public perception. It's all an extension of propaganda. The celebrities with the most awards are being celebrated for being the best puppets. They tell us who to love. They tell us who to follow. They tell us who to listen to. I'm sure most people have heard that there's some level of Satanism in the entertainment industry. There's plenty of material out there exposing various artists, actors, singers as Illuminati puppets. Today, that manipulation of entertainers is facilitated through the CIA. The CIA are the Satanists. Like I mentioned in my Hopkinsville Goblin video, during the Cold War, the CIA had implanted agents into the media. Well, those agents never went away. The CIA uses all of media and entertainment to push propaganda, shape public perception, as well as create and manipulate political movements. For example, the hippie movement was created by the CIA by promoting drug use and encouraging musicians to produce music that was rebellious. In the 1960s, half of the most influential musicians in the United States lived in one place, Laurel Canyon, California. These musicians will talk about these times with great pride of the influence that they held over the youth at the time, boasting that they were musical leaders of the movement. Laurel Canyon was home to many music icons who would leave their marks on the world. It was just honestly an avalanche of kids from all over the world that came to Sunset Strip. From Crescent Heights to Doheny was just full of people walking to the merchant site. I think they, uh, they look like Halloween. And they complained to the city council and the cops started parking a big bus asking everybody for ID and arresting all kinds of underage kids. It was not unusual to go down to Sunset Boulevard and see 500 kids with their arms against the wall being frisked. Basically, it was open season on hippies. But they show absolutely no self-awareness that they were puppets of the CIA being used to encourage youth revolt. These guys were 
feeding kids into the system. In the 1960s and 70s, almost every major musician was on some sort of a psychedelic drug, and they were producing intentionally trippy and hypnotic music, like The Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, Led Zeppelin, all of them. We know about LSD and a lot of the other psychedelic drug cocktails that they would have used during the MK Ultra experiments because they've all been declassified. Most of them are on the streets now. But I guarantee you that the CIA almost certainly employs the use of classified chemicals today that we couldn't even imagine. They definitely use rare street drugs that are difficult to get your hands on. Those are ideal for CIA use. Let me explain. Someone that's been abused their entire life is particularly susceptible to suggestion and manipulation. And one of the ways that abuse affects someone is it makes them crave love, crave acceptance, and crave attention. Those are exactly the kinds of people that the CIA and the entertainment industry look for. They're easy to control. Love bombing is a favorite technique from both toxic partners and agents. What you do is you pump someone full of a bunch of love all at once and make them feel very special. If someone goes their entire life without ever being accepted by other people, without ever having a connection to another human being, and then all of a sudden a new boyfriend or girlfriend shows up and love bombs them, gives them a huge dose of attention tension, acceptance, and fake love, that can be a powerful way to manipulate them. Now imagine the way that that would make you feel to go from having no love in your life at all to receiving all of this overt, over-the-top love, and then add to the mix drugs and sex, a drug you've never tried before, a rare drug that's difficult to get one that only your partner can provide for you. Well, that's going to create an extremely euphoric experience, but also make you extremely emotionally dependent on that person, as well as biochemically addicted to them. The victim believes that they're actually in love. The victim believes that it's an organic relationship and they've met their soulmate and it's the love of their life and they'll never meet another person like this again. Meanwhile, not only have they become emotionally dependent on that person, but biochemically dependent on them. They get addicted to them the same way they get addicted to the drug. They they associate the feeling of love, that euphoric feeling that they get from the love in the relationship, with the feeling that they get from the drug. And that's when things get toxic. That's when things get dangerous. The handler will use the victim's addiction, as well as their emotional dependence on them, as a tool to manipulate and control them. That would be difficult to get out of, even if you started to realize that it was a toxic relationship and that person was bad for you. You would still be biochemically dependent on them, and your subconscious will make excuses for you to go back to them over and over again. And the worst part is that the handler knows that and might extend the periods of time between visits to increase that dependency. First, they'll go a week where they don't show up. Then it'll be a month. Then it'll be two months. And before you know it, the victim is constantly begging all the time to have that person back. And even when they're fighting, when they eventually get back together, they get a new dose of that drug and a whole bunch of sex and love, and suddenly their body is tricked into thinking that they're in love again and that they're happy again. And then the cycle continues as the handler disappears again. The longer that the handler can keep their victim on the hook, the longer that the handler can keep that cycle going, the more control they have over their victim. Suddenly the victim is willing to do more and more crazy things to get time with their partner. Suddenly the victim is willing to jump through more hoops to get one more weekend with their 
their handler. I wouldn't be surprised if at least half of the talent in the entertainment industry has been manipulated this way at least once in their career. I've seen this happen even to a YouTuber before. I'm not gonna say who it was for his privacy, but a few years ago, there was this YouTube commentator who made comedy videos about current events. And then one day the FBI shows up to YouTube headquarters and demands that they delete his channel because they're worried that his audience is a bunch of incels. YouTube agreed and deleted his channel. About a year goes by, this guy's trying to rebuild his audience, which is very difficult because YouTube won't let him. And then all of a sudden, one day, a girl shows up in his life and gets him addicted to a new drug. Then a few months go by and suddenly this guy's tripping up. He can't get his together and the girl won't show up to his house anymore now he's useless and he's crying on his vlog channel that he misses this girl and wants her back she love bombed him and got him addicted to a drug that he couldn't get on his own he associated the euphoric feeling of love and the euphoric feeling from the drugs with each other and then when she took them both away at the same time it him up that woman was an agent that relationship was never real. And I don't know if he ever figured that out. But clearly the plan was to render him useless by turning him into a love-starved drug addict. And at least for a time, it worked. The CIA knows all about abusive families and what effects being raised in an abusive structure has on a person and the types of personalities that come out of those families. For example, someone raised in a narcissistic family structure is extremely susceptible to manipulation and makes an ideal CIA asset. An abuse victim with a specific disposition can be manipulated with specific stimuli. Dr. Cameron certainly had the credentials. At various times, president of the Canadian, the American, and even the World Psychiatric Association. Val Orlico came to the Allen for her postpartum depression. Everybody in the hospital was very much in awe of Dr. Cameron and he strode the halls like a giant and people would say oh there but for God goes God and to me I thought how could he possibly ever take me for a patient who am I I mean this great man who's done all these marvelous things and uh, boy I better work hard and I better do everything that he tells me to do and you know I don't want to lose this opportunity to get well but I never saw him once in all the times that I saw him that I wasn't afraid every time I went down to his office I would shake with fear and every time I'd see him coming down the hall I'd shake with fear but I adored him. That's a sign of abuse to love and adore someone that you fear down to your core. That's an abuse response. Likely the CIA chose her for MKUltra because they could tell from her behavior or her family history that she was an abuse victim and would be extremely susceptible to their tests. See, there's this network of satanic families across the world, and part of the criteria of being in this network is you're required to abuse your children. This is something that I discussed in my podcast a while ago. Generational abuse is a thing. People that were abused growing up will just naturally abuse their children the same way. The only difference between natural generational abuse and Satanists is that Satanists abuse their children on purpose. Most entertainers were raised within these abuse structures and didn't even realize it. It took me until my mid thirties to fully understand that I was raised in a narcissistic family structure. If you were raised in one of these families, likely that network knows who you were and chances are you were groomed and encouraged your entire life to follow the path that you're on today without you ever realizing it. Likely you were always supposed to be a musician or an actor, and it was only a matter of time before a handler came along and created a career for you in the entertainment industry. The difference between Satanists and the CIA is less than one. Now you can find a lot of material on MKUltra today because it's been declassified, but what you won't find are the names of the successful programs that were born from the MKUltra research. The most famous of which is the Monarch Mind Control Program. 
often symbolized with the butterfly. This is something for which you used to be able to find endless material, but today has been completely wiped from the internet. The Monarch Mind Control program is used to control the most famous of all entertainers in Hollywood and the music industry. And everything that I've mentioned in this video, drugs, honey potting, love bombing, all of those things pale in comparison to the regimens used to brainwash our stars. Some of the most famous entertainers in the world have completely lost themselves because of the treatment that they've received from their handlers. Like Britney Spears. She's gone. Just a deep fake version of herself now. As the woman earlier in this video would say, Britney Spears has experienced a death. There are plenty of hints to the Monarch Mind Control program in the entertainment industry, in music especially. So many, in fact, I'd have to dedicate an entire video to the Monarch Mind Control program just to describe all of them. But I'm gonna give you one example here. Britney Spears is the most famous example of a celebrity breaking down from mental conditioning on television. Once Britney Spears went on hiatus from her career because of stress, a lot of drama in her life, and then when she came back from that hiatus, she did an interview on ABC. At one point in the interview, the host is asking Britney questions about specific events in her past. And just as Britney starts to remember a specific traumatic event, she snaps into a completely different character and starts acting like a little girl. A breakup, this spasm of publicity about what happened in, from Mexico to London. It was pretty rough, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um, Oh my goodness, hello. Ew, strong Brittany. Um, yeah, it was a weird time. Ew, I'm in the first, can we stop this? That was extremely tragic to witness and is a sign of mental conditioning. We were never supposed to see that. This character was implanted in her head. What we witnessed here was her brainwashing conditioning popping up to protect Britney from experiencing stress and exposing the truth about her traumatic event. The strawberry character came up to block her from experiencing that memory and sharing it with us. Every once in a while, a major star will break out of their programming and start to display free will as they realize that they're being controlled. So whenever this happens and a celebrity starts to break out of their programming, they'll get whisked away. Suddenly they'll take a random hiatus from their career. And then one day they'll come back into the limelight with a slightly different personality, a slightly different view on life. And sometimes they'll even have blonde hair. That's the one hint that I'm gonna give you in this video. The connection between the Monarch Mind Control program and blonde hair. There are celebrities that know that all of this is happening around them. That know that every other celebrity is either a brainwashed zombie that's been programmed to serve the system, or is an abuse victim that has a handler yet they choose to say nothing. Why? Well, let's just say that they hold really high rank in the Illuminati, and they would do anything to protect their power, their wealth, and their fame. There is one more way the CIA controls entertainers and celebrities. They threaten to hurt them or hurt their family. And that's not an empty threat. They mean that. They do that. So, if you see a celebrity doing or saying something offensive that you don't like, don't judge them too harshly. Because there's a chance that they're doing it against their will. Don't worry, kids. We're all going to say goodbye to the entertainment industry real soon.